Well, hello, and thank you everyone for watching. We had some kind of an issue with the other one. Our guests are coming shortly. Thank you for being here. Hopefully you're going to see this here. So uh, welcome everyone to another episode of Keto Chat. Tonight's episode is going to be focused on mindfulness. Oh no, it's not working. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if it's actually working. Let's see. I don't know. Are you, can you guys see me? Is anybody there? I don't know. It's, it's, my platform is telling me that it's not working. Um, that StreamYard. That. Is anybody out there? Is it the same link for the people that we told about it? No, they do because otherwise they get to come in here. No. Nope. Uh, oh, but Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, Carol. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I thought you were asking if it was the same link that we had to join. No, uh, no. Uh, no, it should be in the same groups, the same page, but I'm getting the same error, unfortunately. So um, this may not actually be doing anything. So we'll go ahead and um, we'll deliver our full content. Uh, we may not have any live viewers because this doesn't look like right now that it's streaming on anything, but it's going to be recorded and I will still upload it um, as if uh, nothing happened. So, okay. oh boy, oh boy. Hey, well, you know, the first two days I tried to stream from the other platform I use, it didn't work. And then the Saturday I had uh, a guy that I watched on YouTube that does lives. He uh, said, my first three platforms crashed. Because uh, yeah. everyone right now is trying to get content yeah. out, streaming. It's the one thing that we've got. And yeah. um, Facebook Live has been working great for me well, <laughs> as a backup. You know, I, I can't have three guests on a Facebook Live, though, unfortunately. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So, uh, and yeah, and there's issues with recording that. So this is this has been great. The last four episodes. Uh, let's see, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So three episodes we had were really great. And for some reason now it's not playing nice with uh, Facebook. So. Um, well, we're just going to do our show and, um, and, uh, people will be watching this at a later time. So thank you all for tuning in later, but again, welcome to our episode of keto chat tonight. We're going to be focusing on mindfulness. How do we stay present in the present moment in this current moment as a way of maintaining sanity as a way of not falling down an anxiety spiral? Um, I've got a couple of guests here. They're going to share some really great stuff. So welcome, Becky Robbins. Hello. Jack Slattery. Hi. And I am Carol Freeman. I'm going to be sharing with you as well um, a mindfulness exercise to help deal with emotional eating, stress eating. A lot of people are struggling with that at this moment. Um, a lot of us also. I'm going to explain why that uh, it's common right now that people are resorting to that or having a pull towards that and give you some uh, tips and a little exercise to go through that. So um, again, thank you for watching. As you're watching this in the future, please let us know in the comments where you're joining us from. Um, so let's see, um, we have a free flow here. So which one of you would like to go first and then I'll introduce you. I can volunteer. <laughs> All right, Becky. And I'm from Seattle. Uh, yeah. Be Becky is a local mindfulness and nature-based expressive arts therapist in Washington State. She focuses on integrative, creative, stressed, uh, stressed. Oh, that was a <laughs> uh, Strengths-based approaches to all that arises along our journeys. Um, and she's got an exercise she's going to lead us through. So welcome, Becky. Thank you so much for being here. Hi. Yeah, thank you. And I brought the monkeys, but I've let them out of my mind so I can focus on you. Oh, that's um, great. <laughs> <laughs> so um, surprise, surprise, I get stressed too. I'm human like everybody else. And so what works for me is figuring out um, what my body needs to calm down so that I can find out how to calm my mind. Um, and sometimes I have to use both at the same time. So one of the reasons I decided to go for a mindfulness and nature-based therapy style is because nature is one of the ways that I can ground and find my center. I find that I'm breathing more easily. Even right now I'm talking about it. 
I can sense that I'm not breathing as easily as I do when I'm walking out in nature. Mm. So even right now, you can just take a nice deep breath and check in. Like, where were you holding? I was holding in my abdomen. That tends to be the place where I hold a lot of my, my stress and tension. And then that tends to feed up into my neck later. Ugh. And um, so one of the exercises, I'll, I'll talk about some of the background first, but I'll lead you through a breathing exercise and it'll be a lot about noticing your body. Not quite the same as a body scan, but it's it's not different enough to worry about it. So similar. So one of the things that happens in my body and most people's is it responds to stress. And if whether you're an empath or just somebody walking through Fred Meyer, you're probably going to also notice other people's stress. And unconsciously, your body will also respond to that. So if you're walking around, you were having a totally chill day and you're in a different environment and suddenly you notice tension, you might check out like, what's the vibe around me? Ah, there's some people who are like waiting for their prescription and they're getting antsy and I'm feeling that. So my first uh, step I'll offer you is to check your external environment to see if there's anything impacting you there um, when you're stressed and then whether or not that's the case second level would be to check in with your body and where you're experiencing that stress. So maybe for some, you're like gritting your teeth or you're making a face. Uh, maybe you're crossing your legs or like picking at your fingernails, something that's, you know, a stress response. Maybe you're clenching your stomach or again, even just as I'm talking, trying to run down the list, feeling that tightness in my chest. My breath isn't as deep. So slowing down. Okay, where is that? Take a breath there. See if it changes at all. And then we can go into this really cool mindfulness exercise, which you can do anywhere, as long as your eyes are open. If you're driving, maybe not with the eyes closed. But uh, <laughs> um, so take a minute with me. And I'm sure you've all got lots of different body parts that you're noticing right now. So you work with yours and breathe into that spot. So we're going to just start by putting our feet on the floor, or if you're, um, well, you shouldn't be driving right now if you're listening to this, but uh, if you can put your feet on the floor safely and just feel that, um, or if you're sitting with your legs pretzel style underneath you, just feel your sit bones on the floor. Notice your spine. Is it slouchy? Is it comfortable? And then just wiggle around until you get comfortable you can feel your sits bones on the floor, your feet on the floor if they're touching. And then if you need to keep your eyes open, do. But if you want to close them, you can do that. And just take a nice deep breath and notice your body. You have one. What's it doing? What's it telling you right now? And another excellent thing to do on your exhale is to audibly exhale and to let out that stress. You can even make really silly sounds. Because that's the kind of day you had. That might get it out of your body. So let's take three more of those together. Really let it out. <sighs> now here's part of the mindfulness. Noticing. How do you feel right now after checking in with your body and taking several deep breaths? <sighs> Notice the quality of your thoughts. Is your mind slower? Calmer? Still buzzing? Are you thinking about something different now? Is it softer? Then check in with your feelings. Are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling worried? Are you feeling calm? Whatever word. Um, and if you don't have words, you can like think of a size or a texture. That's an exercise for another day. Um, but anything that helps you connect with what you're feeling emotionally in this moment 
keeping breathing and then checking in. So you've checked in with your mind, you've checked in with your heart or your emotions. Now check back in with your body. What's that spot, that place feel like that you were feeling the tension in? Is it still tense? Is it relieved a little or just happy you paid attention to it? So just notice that. I know my stomach is more relaxed. Thank God I'm wearing yoga pants. And uh, <laughs> so, so this is step one in this exercise or step, this exercise is step one in a series of exercises that I do. Um, and so this is just the check-in. If later you want to try something to really mark how it's changing for you, you might get a little journal out next to you and write how you're feeling when you sit down to do this exercise. And that way you have a marker to see how different it is afterwards. And then as you continue to do this exercise throughout the day or throughout the week, you can look back at that and see the progress you made. And sometimes that helps rewire your brain to say, oh, there's something that I'm doing that's working because you're seeing the differences. You're writing them down. You're basically doing research on yourself, which is great. Um, and now you have statistics. You could prove to yourself that this actually works. So that's one exercise that you can do um, to deepen the one that I just gave to you. Thank you so much for joining that exercise. Back to Carol. Uh, that's great. That is so valuable. <clears throat> if you all, what, what do you think? I know you're watching the replay right now. So how do you feel? How do you feel? What was the spot you noticed in your body? She led you through that. And then how did you feel different afterwards? And I'm wondering, I'm going to challenge everyone who's watching this to do this once a day. You've got time now. You know you have time. <laughs> Do it once a day and see how this shifts. Really powerful. Very, very cool. Um, we've got a little more time here. So I'm wondering, can you share a little bit about how you got into the work that you're doing? Yes. So um, being the stress case that I was, uh, I needed something different in my life. And way back, God, it was almost 20 years ago, I took a yoga class. I think it was a 24 hour fitness, just like, you know, yoga class. Uh, I was 24, 25 years old. And I remember how I felt and it was so different. And I remember thinking, oh my God, I have got to teach yoga. I have to teach this to everyone. I know I want other people to be able to feel this, this difference. And so I went through some teacher training and, and then I went and continued, they say it's 500 plus hours. It's more like 750 hours. Um, but it was a three and a half, four year training overall that got me to be a yoga therapist. Um, during that, I also studied Ayurvedic medicine, which really helped me get in touch with my body mind connection more and do so through food which I think is about the time that I met Carol. What is, I was exploring some of this food connection. Um, and it was just really interesting to see that what I put in my body, whether it's food or media for that, for that purpose, um, can really impact me and how I see things, how I experience myself throughout the day. I know I was stress eating today. Crackers, crackers, crackers. And um, that kind of stuff definitely gets more monkeys in my mind. So that really touched me onto the mindfulness um, part of my life, but I didn't know it yet. <laughs> that wasn't a buzzword back then, um, not for me. So that was cool. I was doing that while I was working in software, some high tech consulting stuff, and I never could figure out how they were gonna <laughs> come together. But eventually I, um, Sorry, side note, also have always been an outdoors person. I have found that nature is like my church, if you will. So that's where I can find happiness on any given day um, and support. So as I continued towards this, this path of becoming a therapist, which I did not know I was on, um, I started randomly getting hit by other people's cars. I'm a good driver. Um, so that happened multiple times. And uh, it kept happening when I was starting new software jobs. So I got the memo, 
<laughs> like maybe don't go back. Um, and then I had to figure out which career I was going to go into. And so as I was working with my own body and diet and healing, I found the path of counseling um, has been knocking on my door for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, what I hadn't seen yet to bring me to it was that you can really do a lot. You don't just have to sit on a couch and talk. That is mm -hmm. not the only way to do it. So I go outside with people. We go hiking. Um, I do art with people. We make like these little cards, you know, to speak to different parts of ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so many, so <laughs> many things. Um, photography, poetry, dream work. Um, so all of these tiny little parts of my whole life um, that I've been interested all along and probably been doing trainings with uh, for 20 years as well, somehow collided in this counseling world. And it's been really helpful for mindfulness because we don't always have words for things. We aren't always going to get, um, we're not always going to talk it out if there's something stuck in our body. And our breath is probably one of the first and foremost ways that we have control over our bodies and minds. Mm -hmm. And we can use it to self-regulate. So when I learned that for myself, I knew that I needed to share that with other people and um, really I feel like counseling for me is a tree with many branches and there's so many ways to help people. So that's how I, and I accidentally found the branches while I was going through my application process to the school I chose. Mm. <laughs> so the branches picked me and here I am what you have today. <laughs> that's so cool. I mean, I have a degree, well, which was supposed to lead to therapist, but I never, I didn't, <laughs> I wanted the education about how to do therapy, but not to do the therapy. Uh, yeah. I had no idea that there was as cool things as what you've got going on. Like that sounds like really fun therapy. So it is fun therapy for everyone. If, if you're available on Saturday, so on Saturday's show, we're going to be doing all kinds of arts and crafts and, and hobbies mm. and stuff like that. And so if you're Great. available, I'd love to have you come back and do the show, the card things that you have. So, Oh, absolutely. <laughs> talk about that later that's too, another so. exercise in itself <laughs> yeah oh that seems Thank awesome you. Yeah, like it looks like a mini vision board is what it reminds me of it's exact yeah okay, okay. <laughs> cool oh my gosh so great thank you so much becky uh we've been friends for man like 10 oh, more than 10 or 11 years i don't know i haven't seen you in forever though so it's so great yes. to get this way Still, yeah oh <laughs> uh, look at all these uh this this times that we're in that's full of anxiety and and grief and overwhelm and it's actually so good to be able to connect with a lot of people I haven't seen in a long time. So thank you so much yeah. for being here. Um, I'm happy uh, to. Thank you so much. All right. So next we're going to go on to Jack. Uh, Jack, I haven't known him nearly as long, um, <laughs> but Jack, uh, Jack Slattery was a, was a stand-up comedian until the great cancellation of 2020. Uh, <laughs> He's an avid user of psychedelics and has been practicing, practicing transcendental meditation for over a decade. And crows have brought him gifts before. <laughs> Can't wait to hear stories of that. So welcome, Jack. So glad you're here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'll take any stage I can get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, what do you have to share with our viewers today or whenever they're watching this in the future? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, honestly, it, it dovetails with Becky's uh, presentation pretty well, like the the mindfulness aspect of it, the breathing parts of it. it that's kind of the core of Transcendental Meditation. Becky, do you do TM at all? It sounds very similar. No, but it's similar. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just kind of doing that, but longer and mm -hmm. more, yeah, just longer, really. You kind of want to shoot for... Uh, 20 minute sessions, uh, twice a day. Uh, I usually only do one and that's good, but, uh, twice a day is really doing it. Uh, it's really helpful <clears throat> for someone who, I mean, it's, it, it's really helpful for, I mean, absolutely anything, but for someone who, uh, if you want to feel more creative or get in touch with that kind of stuff, like it's great for bringing that up. Uh, it's just great for cleaning, just sweeping the cobwebs out of your, your brain a little bit. Mm. Can you tell us a little, Jack, about 
transcendental say I can't <laughs> transcendental meditation. Uh, can you give us a little bit of background about like different types of meditation? Uh, like, how, is, how is that different than I don't know other kinds? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm far from an expert. I'm just a, a practitioner. Uh, this is the 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 method I was taught. This is the way I know how to do it, and it, it works for me. Uh, I'm not sure. I, mean, I, I guess we could go like self-flagellation is a form of meditation, right? So okay. it's very different than self-flagellation in that you're <laughs> sitting doing nothing rather than wailing and beating yourself. Yeah. Uh, well, how, did, how did you get introduced to it? Uh, in college, uh, a professor slash mentor, um, he, he is a, he was a practitioner and a teacher of it. He could, uh, so I expressed interest in it and he, uh, taught me privately and I got some useful information out of it. It was, uh. Yeah, it was just a, a few series of private lessons, but it's that's all you really need to get going with it. It's it's very simple, and uh, that's the whole point is that it's simple. It, it's literally doing nothing. It's uh, mm. and it it, it it drives me crazy when people are like, "Oh, I could never do that. I could never shut my brain off." But like, that's not the point. Like, that's mm. not the point at all. Uh, you're not trying to stop thinking. You're just trying to stop uh latching on to an idea and kind of running with a train of thought mm -hmm. uh the way it was the way he dana uh kind of described it to me is that you would imagine that you're at a train station you just want you just want to sit at the train station and your ideas as they rise up as they come into your mind are trains entering and leaving the train station and you're just watching the trains come and go you mm -hmm. but you, you don't get on a train, but if you do get on a train, it's okay. You just get off at the next station and you keep watching. Mm. And so that metaphor has always been pretty helpful for me. It's like you, I don't know, you're meditating and then like something comes up and you just start thinking about whatever apples or uh, a joke comes up and you want to write it down. And like, you just, I don't know. I usually keep a pad near me and I just write down ideas that come up like that. And, uh, just get get back off the train. Just sit back at the station. Hmm. Uh, so, how, how long have you been practicing? Uh, about Eight. ten years. Yeah, about ten years. Okay. Right. And what is what kind of effects has it had in your life? Uh, it's given me a lot of <clears throat> just calmness. Just like I. I've been doing it so long now that I can just kind of fall into a breathing pattern, like anywhere that I am on the bus, you know, in a bar, wherever. And it's just like, there's just no tension. It just like eases the tension. Uh, good posture helps with that too. Uh, yeah. And drinking water, but uh, just, just finding a rhythmic a rhythm in your breathing is uh I don't know. It's, it's like a superpower unto itself. Like you can just like be calm anywhere you want. Like you just kind of, mm. I don't know, start internally glowing. It's, it's nice. Mm. It's like that's a heart, nice. tub. It's like a heart tub for your inner body. You know? Oh, Ooh, that's cool. Oh, I'm going to go get <laughs> in a heart tub. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly you got everybody's attention. Oh, <laughs> well, this is a, it's a really, um, Powerful thing, and I think it's it's great that you mentioned too that a lot of people are like, "Oh, I could never do that because I could never turn my <laughs> right. mind off." Uh, but yeah, keeping in mind, keep in mind that the goal is not to turn your mind off; it's to watch it. You're not trying to stop the trains; you're just trying to observe them. And and once you do it long enough, and once you kind of like get into the habit of it, and it is, you know, a practice in that like you're not going to be good at it right away. Uh, and good at it doesn't mean good at it, but like. You're good at it the first time you do it, but it gets better every time you do it. And uh, you'll develop muscles you didn't know that you had in like getting into this like brain state and uh, breathing pattern. It does get easier. And you're, but the goal is to like, uh, 
shut off the movie projector in your brain and just mm. look at the, look at the blank screen. Mm. Like, that's kind of the goal. Mm. Uh, I, I'm going to totally forget what the Sanskrit word for that is, but uh, oh. there is one. It's, I think it's like Samsara or Simsara. Samsara. Samsara. Yeah. And you're just mm. blank. That is the goal. Mm. Uh, you're aware, but you're blank. Like you're, you're 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 aware of your surroundings, but your mind is just blank, and it's it's great. It doesn't happen all the time, but when it does happen, it's it's really nice. Mm. But uh, there's David Lynch is a big fan of transcendental meditation, and there's several YouTube videos you can find of him kind of like discussing the benefits that he's had. Using it. <clears throat> uh, Jerry Seinfeld said he could have made a few more seasons of Seinfeld had he been doing uh, two. He was already doing one 20 minute session, but if he had been doing two 20 minute sessions, he could have gone a few more seasons. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. It, again, I'm not an expert. I'm not a doctor, uh, but it, it lowers your brain into a different type of uh, state like the, I think it's the theta wave state, which is like essentially REM sleep. So like 20 minutes of like a good meditation is equivalent to several hours of like sleep. Mm. Oh. Yeah, there's lots and lots of research, research that validates uh, all the many health benefits of meditation. Yeah, it's, uh, and I mean, I can give you like the basic rundown of how to do it if you want. Sure, sure. Um, do you lead us through, or, uh, or uh, I mean, I mean we're, we don't have twenty minutes to do it, but uh, but you know, the basics. <laughs> are, uh, I'd make riveting, riveting show. Twenty <laughs> minutes of us sitting here doing nothing. <laughs> uh, but the basics are essentially that you just want to find somewhere you know comfortable to sit. Uh, a, a straight back is preferable. You want good posture. Uh, I, I like to do a little yoga before it just like, you know, stretch it out, just stretch it out. Uh, and then just, well, you can sit in a chair. I usually sit like cross-legged on my bed or something, but you can sit wherever, just as long as you're comfortable. Uh, and you want to kind of like make your hands like this. I find that helps. That keeps your mind, like as long as your thumbs are like erect and touching, your mind is active. You're not sleeping. That's why mm -hmm. you don't want to when you're laying down because mm -hmm. like you probably will go to sleep and that's okay. not, not the point. Yeah. So, I can prove that every night. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you just kind of sit there and you, your whole, your hands are like, you know, a belly button area, like and just keep your thumb up and you just close your eyes and uh, breathe like Becky was showing us. And if you need a, a mantra or something like that to just like keep you sitting on that bench at the train station, you can go, you know, the classic OM, OM, or ROM, or any derivation of that, really. Whatever works for you, just like a very simple tonal sound. Uh, is It really, it does help. And you can say it out loud, or you could just say it internally in your mind, uh, either one. Real transcendental meditation, this is where it gets a little weird for me, because I've never paid for the classes, but the you gotta pay for classes, and they give you your own individual mantra, and I don't know how that works. I have my own individual mantra. I believe the uh, the curse attached to it that I can't tell you what it is or something bad will happen. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. But, <laughs> what if somebody but, walked in on you while you were saying it, though? I, I, I don't know what here now. Okay. <laughs> uh, I rarely say it out loud. Also, I sometimes I like to put on a uh, three-hour Tibetan bowl meditation. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's good. YouTube uh, videos. There's some pretty good ones. Mm -hmm. And it just like kind of, you can set the scene however you want. I go, I go fancy. I light incense. I listen to Tibetan bowls. I get comfy. Uh, it's fun. But then you're just sitting there with your hands like that and you're breathing in and out. And then, I mean, that's literally pretty much it. You're just doing it for 20 minutes. And then it gets wild once you like, you're like, oh, just sit there and breathe for 20 minutes. Yeah. But like, it gets crazy. You're like, your brain is just like popcorn. It's just going everywhere. The monkeys. The monkeys, yeah. <laughs> Lots of stuff come floating up. And uh, 
it's going to be hard to sit on that bench at the train station at first. You're going to ride all these ideas all over the place. And that's totally fine. Just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Uh, but a word of caution, don't do it, especially when you first start, don't do it for more than 20 minutes in one go. Don't think, okay, I'm going to do it for 40 minutes all in one go and just get it over with because mm -hmm. you will you got a lot of sludge in your brain. You got a lot of dark stuff in there. So you're going to pull up a lot more than you want to deal with way too fast. Go, like, it's serious. Go slow. Well, that's the American way. If some is good, more must be better. So. No, it, moderation. It, it is not. Like, uh, <laughs> you, you can go into a weird depressive funk for a while if you meditate too hard, too fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good cautionary tale. <laughs> oh. So 20 minutes at a go, twice a day, ideally. Is and it okay if people start out with five minutes or a minute first if they're starting out? You know, I'm, I've never been like a half dose kind of guy. I, I do the whole thing. But uh, if that's what makes you feel better and comfortable, sure, build up to it, whatever. It's more about just starting it. Mm -hmm. We uh, Last Saturday, actually, our show um, – uh, somebody brought up streak trackers. So this would be a great thing to be able to start mm. track. And so there's some apps out there that you can track. So one of, you know, well, there's apps for run streaks, but there's also apps that just track how many days in a row you've done something. And so for those of you right now that have some extra time and you've always wanted to do meditation, uh, you can download the streak track it's not this kind of streaking but um street tracker <laughs> so fun. and challenge yourself to start meditation and I mean, see it, many, now, now is definitely the time right like you have yeah. how many how many uh netflix shows can you watch in a day like, you can, you can get that with, streak you can <laughs> set aside two 20 minute sessions a day yeah and, uh it's like free drugs it's like free drugs <laughs> yes. Well, and you can also like if you do want to watch your Netflix shows, only let yourself watch two, then do the twenty minutes. Yeah. Then do the other two, but not until you've done the twenty minutes. Give Pretty yourself good. some, yeah. you know, some rewards. Yeah. Then your yeah. brain will be happy to get a reward. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, it's great. I can keep talking about. It. Okay. Yeah, that's one of the, one of the reasons why I'm doing this show is that I want to show people that. Um, although our tendency is to be worried and stressed out and overwhelmed, um, we have choices right now. You have the we option do. to use this time to improve yourself, to do all those things that you always wanted to do, but say you don't have the time <laughs> to. And how many of you that are watching have always thought, well, I've heard meditation is really good for me, but gosh, I just wish I had the time to do it. So I challenge you uh, to start a meditation practice. And if you do, Tell us in the comments you're going to commit to that and come back and share with us what that experience was like. And we just gave you two. One 20 minutes. One was what? Three, three to five minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, anywhere in between so many different styles. So find what fits for you. Yeah. And I'm going to, uh, Jack, anything else to say about that? I'm going to share a, a mindful eating uh, exercise with people. So. Uh, no, no, I think I got it all. Okay. <laughs> like you said, you could probably talk for hours and hours on it, but, uh, thank you so much for being here and sharing that and, um, taking the time out of your terribly busy schedule right now. I love that you're color coded for branding here. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm going to talk about mindful eating. Uh, again, I'll just introduce myself. I'm Carol Freeman. I'm a board certified ketogenic nutritionist. Uh, I too as well used to be a comedian back before the big cancellation of 2020. We'll see, you know, things are going to be very different in the future here. Um, and I, not to brag, but actually I, I'm booked on a show on Friday, a virtual show that we're going to try to figure that out for, for some ladies. Uh, if it works, um, we may be rolling out some more. So we'll see. I don't know. It's, it's just Excellent. part of, part of stand-up comedy is you have to have an audience. You have to have live bodies that are laughing because you there's an energy exchange and you ride that wave. Um, and so it just, you know, there's a reason why all Netflix specials have a live audience or recorded with an audience. There's also a reason why 80 sitcoms either had a live audience or, or a laugh track. Like, 
Um, things just aren't as funny if we're just telling them. But although I got to say, there's some comedians that I know that are out there doing a live every night, and it's like, oh, you're still funny even if there's no audience. So they got something. But uh, anyway, <laughs> so um, I am trained. Um, uh, I've got a master's degree in nutrition and psychology. I've got a certification in clinical hypnotherapy. Uh, by day I specialize, and now by night too, I specialize in helping people be able to follow a ketogenic diet as a long-term lifestyle so that they can end the battle they've had their entire lives with their weight, lose the weight and actually keep it off because, oh, they get the support and the approach that they need to actually be able to stick with it. So I weave in everything I've ever studied psychology wise into my keto approach. And so it's part of why it actually can be a sustainable lifestyle is not only uh, how do you lose weight quickly, but how do you address all the things that make it so that most people can't stick with something? So we're dealing with getting rid of cravings, natural regulation of appetite, and behavior change, which can be really challenging too. So uh, one of the things that I learned when I was in school was this concept of mindful eating. So this I learned this long before I knew anything about a ketogenic diet. Um, and we learned this concept. Now, the problem is, is that it doesn't work really well. So people that are in weight gain mode, um, their insulin is really high and their body is constantly storing everything they eat as, as fat. And when insulin is high, it makes it so that their fat can't come out of storage. So they're constantly hungry. They have very low energy uh, and they're constantly gaining weight. So unfortunately, society looks at them as like, wow, why don't they just exercise more? Why don't they just have control over what they're eating? But anybody who's ever battled their weight, which is everybody that I'm working with, they know that they have a lot of willpower. They've tried every diet out there. And every time they do, they're constantly hungry. They're so tired. They're obsessed with food. And when they do keto the right way for the first time, often it's the first time they've ever experienced freedom. They're not hungry. They've got tons of energy uh, and, and their body is able to actually let the fat out of storage so that they can get uh, the fuel that they need. And so it's, it's, mm -hmm. they get this glimpse of freedom. Uh, usually the work people I'm working with have tried keto on their own. They couldn't stick with it. They couldn't keep, quite get it right, but they have a glimmer of hope that, oh my gosh, this is the first time in my life that I felt this freedom. And I found that when I apply the things that I learned, like mindful and intuitive eating, once people are already in this state of their body can actually use its own fuel that it's been storing for decades, then these concepts work beautifully. But if you tell somebody that's uh, in, you know, weight gain mode, uh, you know, they're still burning carbs, their body's storing everything they eat, um, you tell them to eat mindfully, and I'll tell you what that is in a moment. Uh, it doesn't work very well. So I'll, I'll tell you my results. So mindful eating. Um, so I think I always, my my brain thinks of things in systems and processes and checklists and, and outlines. And so for me, the way I always thought of mindfulness is it has three different parts. Um, it it needs to be, you're, you're in this moment right now. I mean, right now, there's no past, there's no, pre, there's no future. It's just what's happening right now. Um, the second one is there's no judgment. There's no right, wrong, good or bad. It's just is. Whatever's happening just is. And then the third part of it is is you're in full awareness of your body and the moment. And I think of uh, I, I've got a way of helping you bring get into that moment as well. So um, so mindful mindful eating then is that you're making a choice right now in the moment of what to eat, and as you eat it you experience it without judgment, um, full of awareness of how it tastes and feels in your body as you uh, consume it. Um, so mindful eating, once you're already in, for the people that I'm working with again, um, once they're in that ketogenic state and they're able to actually tune in to when am I really hungry? When am I not hungry? Uh, when I'm eating, I've had enough and I'm satisfied and I can actually stop eating when I'm full uh, this is where mindful eating is really, really powerful. So, um, so a way of bringing yourself into a mindful state is what I've found and what I learned works well for the people that I've worked with is to begin. And this actually overlaps with um, the hypnotic state as well is to bring in all of your senses. So to help yourself be in this present moment right now without judgment, 
and to use all of your senses uh, with full awareness is to just think about the five senses that we have and then mentally check them off. Okay, so right now, what do I smell? What do I see around me? All the colors and shapes of everything around me. What do I feel? Whether you're sitting or standing in your feet. Uh, what do I hear? Right now I hear my cat sleeping down there snoring. I hear my own, my own voice. I hear the fan in my computer. I, I hear a little bit of background noise from Becky and Jack. I think that's all I hear. Uh, and taste is your fifth sense. Now, right now, you know, there's this, whatever the taste in my mouth. Oh, but, uh, you know, as you're eating a food, you're going to be noticing how does it taste? How does it feel in your mouth? How does it crunch? Um, and doing this exercise can be really, really powerful with food because a lot of times people are eating foods that they just think are good, um, that they've always eaten, but they're not actually conscientious when they're eating it to find out does it actually even taste good? Do you like what you're eating? I am a big advocate for don't eat any food that you don't like. <laughs> um, if you now there, there's a, the coaching I do with keto. There's definitely foods that taste really good to us that I encourage people to avoid, but also <laughs> within the keto parameters, um, if there's a food that's a keto friendly food, but you don't like it, don't ever eat it. <laughs> Uh, and also, if there's a keto-friendly food like steak or bacon or cheese, if, as long as it works well for your body, it tastes good, it makes your body feel good, go for it. Um, there's there's a, there's sensory input that we have as humans, actually, from foods that don't taste good or have a bad reaction in our mouth. It can mm -hmm. be that, that there's a nutrient in there that you've received too much of, uh, that you don't need any more of. Um, and so, you know, animals actually have this wisdom, right? There's no deer nutritionist out there. There's no, uh, deer go out in the wild and, and they can eat the right amount of leaves and grass. They eat the ones that have the nutrients that they need. Uh, mm -hmm. they don't have any, uh, Jillian Michaels out there telling them to run 10 miles a day uh, <laughs> or, you know, that like, you know, well, you need to eat four cups of these greens and then you need to eat four, <laughs> four more cups of, of these. And that's how you get all your nutrients met. No, they they taste and they eat and their body tells them that tastes good, eat more of that, that tastes bad, don't eat any more of that. Um, so humans have moved far away from that. I mean, part of that is because most of our food is so overly processed and refined and hybridized and high in sugar and fat and all this stuff together that makes it override all of our natural abilities. But when we get back to real natural food, the way that it's closest to the way that it's grown, um, our body's really good at telling us what we need and don't need food wise. So. Uh, I'm giving you permission right now as a nutritionist. And again, uh, we're not medical doctors. We're not prescribing anything. Even me as a healthcare provider, I'm not telling you personally what you should do. Uh, but this is what I tell my clients. I'll, I'll put that caveat is that um, if there's a food that you don't like and you've been eating it because you think it's good for you, I'm, I'm making a recommendation. Of, I'm giving you permission right now to stop eating that. <laughs> stop eating it. If you don't like spinach, don't eat it ever again. Um, and also, yeah, foods that you do like that, that are healthy, whole foods, go ahead and enjoy that food. And especially if you can eat it in a mindful way. Uh, mm -hmm. one of the big ones for the clients I'm working with is cheese. A lot of people tell me, um, oh, I can't stop eating cheese. I love cheese. I feel so bad. I could never stop it. But I'll tell you what, everybody who has had that struggle, I say, I, I'll give you an assignment. I want you to, for the next 24 hours, I want you to go and try to eat as much cheese as you possibly can, uh, right? And they go, oh, no, I would eat so much. I would never be able to stop. Never happen. <laughs> no. If, if you the assignment to try to eat as much cheese as possible, <laughs> they'll get tired of it. And so most people, because they tell themselves it's bad for them, then they put a limit on it and they're like, Oh, I better, I can't eat. I can't, I can't have very much. I can't eat it. So then they obsess about it because they can't have it. Um, so I challenge you if you, you think you're, but, but also this isn't, uh, some people don't do well with cheese. It doesn't agree with them. So this is part of the exercise, right? So if you're eating cheese, maybe it tastes good here, but as it goes down, it causes you some discomfort and pain. That's mindful eating. You know that it doesn't feel good in your body. Oh, Jack's, Jack's got a 
Uh, I just wanted to break in with this. Jonathan, Jonathan C. ate <clears throat> a 500 gram block of cheddar cheese in three minutes, 56 seconds. Uh, it's a competitive sport, cheese eating, and that's about a pound of cheese. So that's the, well, that's the world record right now, is a pound. Okay, pound. Well, so that's good, right? So he wasn't what? eating mindfully, but also just a pound of cheese is not that much yeah. cheese. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you probably didn't feel good afterwards. Yeah, for for people <laughs> for people that think they could never stop, I'm sure that that guy probably didn't want cheese for a month after that. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Yeah. So and, and you know, if all you eat during the day was a pound of cheese, it's not even going to be that many calories either. So, uh, yeah. So so I challenge everyone watching this, whether you're following keto or not. Um, is the next time that you sit down to any meal, whatever it is you're eating. Uh, for those of you not keto or stressing or whatever, um, this is actually exercise I used to do with my clients before keto. Um, most junk foods out there, they're specifically designed that they only taste good if you eat them fast, mindless. Oh, damn. So those of you out there in the world, that are eating Doritos. I challenge you right now. Eat, <sighs> eat it slow and mindfully. I used to do this exercise with, as a group with my clients and, so if you sit with full awareness and notice everything around you and you put that Dorito in your mouth and you, you bite down slowly and you chew slowly and you notice how it tastes in your mouth and you notice the texture, it tastes horrible. It doesn't taste good at all. It tastes like cardboard. Like the chip quality is like the worst quality ever. The flavors don't taste good. It tastes like cardboard in your mouth. And you're like, why did I think these tasted good? And it's because they're they're designed, they only taste good if you eat them fast. They do that on purpose so that you will overeat them. If that's why the bag them, says yeah. you can only you can't eat just one. Yeah. Oh, that's the Lay's one. That's a that's also that's the same different. thing. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh the other, yeah. So so most junk food is meant. It tastes good if you eat it really, really fast. But if you slow mm. down and eat it slowly and mindfully, most of it doesn't taste good at all in that context. So um, if anybody's interested in more information about this, there's a book out there called The Dorito Effect. Hey, oh. you've all got time now to read or audio book or something like that. Check that out. Um, but again, any meal that you're going to eat, I challenge you. Can you do it <laughs> once in the next week? How about every meal that you do from now on? Um <laughs> Just start out by centering yourself and noticing, you know, bring in all five senses. This present moment, there's no judgment, whatever you're eating right now. And just see, what do you notice about how it actually tastes, about how it actually makes you feel in your body? Uh, very interesting. So I look forward to hearing from all of you about doing this experiment, about what you discovered about foods that you thought you really liked and let go uh foods maybe you're eating stress eating wise right now that that you realize like wow i'm actually this is just shoving something in my face as fast as possible this doesn't actually taste good um so then you're you could be empowered then to actually make those choices of what can you eat right now that actually tastes really good when you slow down and enjoy it those usually aren't going to be junk food items. They're going to be foods that are actually nutrition, nutritious to your body. So I give you, I challenge you eat foods that taste good when you eat slowly and savor every bite and morsel. All right. That's my, uh, that's my little bit. Um, now, Thank you. yeah, typically I, I, uh, I ask questions of, of, um, I, so Jack, what questions do you have for Becky? I forgot to ask that part earlier. So do you have questions for Becky or anything about what she talked about? Oh I think God. you already did. Under the bus like this. What's that? You're just gonna throw me under the bus like this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of commented on what she was doing anyway, but um, how you know, like as far as like art therapy. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Uh, so where do you like to go hiking? Like how long of a hike uh, mm. do you do? That do, depends. Do you talk during the hike, or is it like a silent meditation kind of thing? Oh, are you talking about when I go with clients? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, most client sessions are a, a soft hour, as we call it, you know, with a, a few minutes at the end for scheduling and stuff. So thinking about that and driving and all of this, it's usually urban hikes um, mm -hmm. anywhere from uh, 
Golden Gardens, St. Edwards Park, uh, um, Discovery Park, you know, all these different areas. They could be just walking around a park. Um, sometimes it includes playing on the kids' toys, <laughs> like big kids' toys. And so most of the sessions are an hour and, and people can sign up for longer sessions. And then those are definitely like walk and talk. And there are moments of silence. Um, but then when I do the group ones, those ones are definitely, those can be longer. Mm -hmm. And they involve a lot more uh, stop and pause exercises or even mindfulness games to sharpen your skills and senses. And, um, and then we sit and like process it together. Like I did a sound bath once where I, I dropped individual people in different spaces. Like you sit over here, we go six feet away or no, sorry, not six feet. That's today. Um, go like 20 feet away, put the other person over there. And so however many are in the group, we're all a good distance away. Um, and then sit and have this sound bath, listening to what we hear around us and noting it in a journal in a specific way. And then coming back after, you know, 15, 20 minutes is a good amount of time. And then um, just kind of collect ourselves, have a little snack if we need it and then talk about what we experienced and then finish the hike and go back uh, with our day. So that's a very rough sketch of how that might look. And those hikes could be um, a little further out and, you know, might involve carpooling, but those are usually more group. They're not like therapy groups um, or the clients that I regularly have. Those would be your everyday people who want self growth and they want to experience more mindfulness and hiking. So that's how that goes. You could totally still do the hikes virtually, right? So somebody goes a walk someplace, you go on a walk and then you just talk to each other on a, you could in this day. And yeah. And in this day and age uh, of the virus, I would say, yes, I would do that. But typically it's phone phone device free. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, if somebody internationally wanted to go do this hike thing, we could totally do that um, for sure. Yeah. So you could be uh, COVID compliant and yes. still do hike therapy with people. So yeah, exactly. Right now. Yeah. Right That's now. Sign yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Becky, do you have questions for Jack? Um, yes, I do have questions for Jack. So, <laughs> so Jack, um, I was listening to you talking about how you usually do one a day, um, but you two is optimal. When you've had your two day meditations, um, 20 minutes, twice a day, have you noticed a significant difference or a little difference? Um, and what, like, have you ever had a really long streak of twice a day? I have, I've had, uh, when I first started, I was very diligent about twice a day. I was still in college, I had time. Uh, especially in the summers, it was much easier. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's an accumulative kind of thing. I don't think it's like, you know, the, you start out doing two a day and then, or you start out doing one a day and then you build up to two. I don't know if you'll notice a significant change right away, but I think if you mm -hmm. stay on that path, it will become more noticeable because uh, over time, over, I think over time, yeah. like, you, it just develops into a, you know, it just compounds on itself. The one you did earlier is like going to be, it's like warming up for your next one in a way. It's like doing mm -hmm. stretches for your next one. Uh, yeah. Like toning. <laughs> yeah, it's like toning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think it's just a, like I said before, ultimately just a practice thing like anything else. The more you do it, the better you're going to be at it. Uh, yeah. Repatterning. Which is a really weird way to talk about it being better at it, which implies you can be bad at it. But like, right. uh, yeah. <laughs> but just improving yourself, just challenge or you know pushing yourself to not push yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know what you, I know exactly what you mean. And those who are learning this will eventually be like, "Oh, that's what they were talking about." <laughs> oh, this, this is uh, so. I have a question for you. Oh, yes. Okay. What is, so you've, it sounded to me like you were using mindfulness 
for mindful eating and ketogenic state of mind interchangeably. And I don't know anything about keto anything, which is, you know, newbie. So what is a ketogenic state? Um, yeah, so a ketogenic state, um, when we keep our carbohydrate intake low that goes in our mouth, um, it forces our body into this ketogenic state. So uh, ketosis is a state where there's ketones present in the blood, which is a medical term. And the way that we get there is that we restrict, restrict the amount of carbohydrates we're eating. So our body has this backup uh, plan. So when carbohydrates in, in nature were not prevalent, our body basically turns over to fat as its primary fuel source. And mm -hmm. as a byproduct of using fat as a primary fuel, your body also makes these other um, molecules called ketones, and it can use those as fuel as well. So in the absence of carbohydrates uh, in our body also can use ketones as fuel. So the brain actually really loves ketones as fuel. It makes this nice, even state, uh, high alertness uh, that people experience. Um, now, our bodies are really designed, you know, way back when we didn't have an abundance of high sugar garbage <laughs> food. Yeah. Uh, our bodies are designed to have metabolic flexibility. Uh, that means that whatever we ate, our body could burn, whether it was fat or carbs. And, you know, in the absence of food, we could turn to our body's fat storage and use that for fuel. So that's mm -hmm. metabolic flexibility. That's the way the human body was designed to operate. Um, unfortunately, over time where we've shifted, you know, it's a combination of things. We were told that fat was really bad for us to eat, um, that we should instead eat tons of carbohydrates. And then the food manufacturers responded by making a bunch of high carbohydrate refined foods. Yeah. Um, it, we've switched from the ability to have metabolic flexibility that whatever we ate. And, you know, there are some people in the world that still have this. It's the minority of people out there, unfortunately. Um, people that are very active still or just genetically in an anomaly, maybe like less than 5% of the population, I think, are like that. That like they've never been overweight. That they're would be me. That, they're the people that Sorry. Like, oh, man, they can just eat whatever. <laughs> Well, you know, that's why I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So you're, gen you're a genetic anomaly because well, back in the day when you needed to be able to store fat in order to survive the famine, your, your type would not have made it. But now no. when you get you and you're like, Oh, you're so lucky. How is it that you ah. can't gain weight? You know? Um, so, you know, so that's why majority of the population is in this place of like, we're all overweight and, and why, 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 why do I have such weak why? kids? Not, it's just, yeah. we're, our bodies are designed. So it's, it's a genetic mismatch right now or, or um, mm -hmm. evolutionary mismatch. Um, the way that our food supply is, is really good at making us fat <laughs> the, for the predominant people. So, um, yeah. Or feel crappy for the unpredominant people. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we've moved in the state of like primarily eating carbohydrates. And so if you mostly eat carbohydrates all of the time, your body is basically like, well, we don't need to make all of this stuff in order to get the fat out of use and burn that. We never burn that. So let's just stop making all of that machinery. Let's change the cell structure so that we don't have it be able to get the fat out of storage and let's just shove all that in the furnace and keep gaining weight. And so over time, Got your it. body cuts off all of the ability to even use fat for fuel. And mm. so it basically makes it so you're dependent on constantly having carbohydrates. And our body doesn't have a storage of carbohydrates. And so if we're running primarily on that, you have to constantly be eating those. You have to eat six or seven or eight times a day uh, and constantly fuel. So that's why people typically, and, and you know, they get, they get beat up because they're constantly hungry uh, they got to eat all the time. Uh, they're really low energy. Uh, they're lethargic. They want to sit around and not do much. They don't have the energy to exercise. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so for people like that, that are, um, you know, they don't have metabolic flexibility. They're stuck in carb burning mode. We have to shift. It's a very dramatic shift of restricting carbohydrates. So basically we, sh we shut off that fuel source. We're like, body, you need to adapt. We need you to get back to knowing how to burn fat again. Good. And the only way to do that, it's like it's like a drug detox. So, yeah. so if you keep carbs coming in, your body doesn't ever shift back to turn, learning how to use fat. Um, so we have to shut that off. And unfortunately, the what's happened with people is it can take 18 to 24 months or even longer for the body to get really good at 
have that flexibility. And some people are never really able to gain. In fact, most people aren't able to gain that metabolic flexibility back that they could occasionally have high carbs and then switch back into burning fat. Um, also, but it's good to know and to have that expectation and understanding. Well, and, and also um, there's, there's the brain chemistry part of it as well. And so um, that also another um, uh, complicating factor for things as well. So if people have built up the brain chemistry and addiction to food, yep. that it doesn't matter if their body's metabolically flexible and can burn carbs or fat, if they're addicted and as soon as they start to have carbs again, they can't stop eating them, that's a whole other issue too. So I address oh. both of those. Um, yeah, so that's- Thanks. Yeah, so that's, that's what ketosis is. And typically when people are in that state, when their body's primarily burning fat for fuel and they've got these ketones, they've got a, a steady energy state throughout the day. They have a very low appetite. They're not obsessed with food. They don't really have any cravings um, and, and all of that. So a lot of, a lot of people, actually everybody who's ever been in ketosis says, oh my gosh, I just feel so much better in this state the mental clarity and energy. Um, but it's not always necessarily an ideal state for everyone to be in all of the time, right? And so somebody who's very lean, um, because it's an appetite suppressant, it's not a good idea for them necessarily to follow it, because they don't need to lose any more fat, fat on their body. And that can be actually detrimental to health to have not enough fat on their body. So mm -hmm. That I'm, I, is that, is that uh, more Thank than you wanted to know about it for now? Or <laughs> no, that's great. I want to know all the more things. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> another time. Thank now, you. Yes. Though there's so much more out there. So, um, well, should I pose Jack? Do you have any questions for me? You don't have to. <laughs> Are you going to book me once you get the shows get going again? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, I, I had a wild idea today about how we might actually might be able to do online, um, uh, online shows in this platform if we have enough guests on here with good people Ooh, that come out. So Derek and, I, Derek and I are going to work on that. So okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> budding comedian over here. <laughs> you? Yes. Wait. wait. Me. Uh, me. This is weird because it's backwards, so I can't even point to you. Right. Yes. I studied what? improv, and now I'm in love with it. There we go. There we go. I had to point the opposite way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah, when comedy comes back to life, we'll have to get you back out on an open mic stage then. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, okay. Um, let's wrap this up. Thank you all for being here. Here, we, we do one last round. I call it the lightning bolt round. This is actually how I close out my coaching calls too. So um, each of us take a turn and share your aha, your takeaway, or whatever you want to say to wrap this up. And also... Be sure to mention how people can contact you for your services or follow you on social media or whatever that way too. Do you want to go in a little circle? You're going first now. So. All right. I'm okay. So again, my name is Becky Robbins. Uh, my business is Inner Phoenix Embodied Arts. And um, what I learned today is, gosh, I really liked um, what you just said about the ketos ketones and, and such so i'm going to explore that a little more and how that impacts me and then from jack um i'm <laughs> want to check out your comedy uh as well as um dip my toe into uh tm transcendental meditation a little bit and see if i can make it to 20 minutes with my add <laughs> so um so how you can contact me uh, if you would like to go on one of those uh, group hikes for mindfulness, or if you're interested in being a therapy client, um, you can contact me at my website, which is http colon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. You don't have to do that, but there's no www. Okay. So don't do that. It's, um, it's innerphoenix.wordpress.com. And my email address, a little bit different, is becky at innerphoenix.net. Um, there's a story behind that. And then um, you can also find me, uh, I have a Facebook page, which is Inner Phoenix Embodied Arts. And I post some of the videos for like the hikes and stuff there. So thank you both. And on to you, Jack. Cool. Uh, yeah, an aha moment for me was learning about the 
hikes that you do, the group hikes, like that sounds really, it's really cool. It sounds really fun. Uh, have to check that out. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Jack Slattery Comedy, spelling of the name right there on the lower screen. Uh, <laughs> That's good. Uh, yeah, it was, this was a lot of fun. Thank you. And Carol, uh, I had something, but now I, I'm blanking. I, I talked about me for a second. I was supposed to talk about you. No, no, <laughs> no. You're supposed to talk about you right now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, you did great. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Um, my, I'm going to, my takeaway, my aha, I love the therapy that you're doing. The fact that you can like hike therapy. I've never heard of that. And it's amazing. It's so great. I love it. Hike it out. Uh, and yeah, I, I thought this earlier, I didn't say it, but I bet you're just so happy in alignment with your true self right now compared to what you were doing before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's great. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, the biggest compliment you can give is to invite other people to watch, you know, to like the page and come back. So I'm doing this every single night, 7 p.m. Pacific yeah, this is going to be posted because of recording. We had some tech issues. Sorry about that. I don't know. I have no, that, I have no control over it. So I'm just going to be mindful. In the moment, that's what we did. We just did the best that we could in this moment and let go of everything we can't control. But thank you all for being here. We're coming back. Uh, lots more good stuff coming up. So thanks for watching. We'll see you all soon. Bye. Bye.